Um, so during injection molding, plastic is subjected to a large amount of force uh, on the material that, that subjects it to shearing. Um, it's particularly against the cavity wall or right where the frozen layer is formed. So typically with a, with a cold runner, with a, with a typical injection molded part, um, there's a frozen layer that's formed just inside the cavity wall. Um, and then right inside that frozen layer is where the plastic is, is flowing you know, quite quickly and, and dragging along and rubbing. And that's where a lot of the shear happens. It's right inside that frozen layer. So if you look at the green profile, you can see that the, where the high peaks are is where the highest shear is just inside that wall thickness. So this is actually a cross section, if you can imagine the cross section of the thickness and the polymer flowing through in the yellow. And then we see a drastic drop in the overall shear rate as we get more towards the center because there's really, there's more mixing and, and, and tangling going on. There's not really a lot of push or a lot of um, dragging along a surface like you have against the wall with a frozen layer. Of course, why do we care about that? So shear can create a, a lot of things. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of people uh, joining us today have, have dealt with shear in some way or the other. Um, so you have shear thinning. And I'm going to talk about all these topics today. Um, we have degradation of the material due to shear. Uh, we have shear-induced orientation of the material. Um, we have any molded in stresses that may be formed from the shear stress um, that's, that's occurring in the part. Um, we also have shear-induced uh, surface defects. Um, so anything that's happening along the surface, flow marks, tiger marks, uh, things like that. And then lastly, we'll talk about shear induced uh, heating and imbalance. So there's also a phenomenon that um, is pretty common in the plastics industry these days, um, where you, there's uh, some shear that can create some issues even within uh, the same mold. Okay, so I'm going to start out here and talk about shear stress. I mean, so just by definition, shear stress is a measure of the tension created between the plastic molecules. So if you can imagine, you know, tons of these, these molecules um, that are being you know, put through this, this process, right, of heating up and, and melted and all that, um, there's, there's a lot of shearing that happens. Um, so within Molex 3, we can actually capture this. Um, now, there are some things that require us to capture this accurately, which I will cover. Um, but it is possible to look at this a couple different ways. So we'll first start with shear stress. So if you look in the upper right corner, just as an example, this is showing the overall shear stress on the part at the end of fill. Um, so this isn't really showing you where maybe a, maybe it hit a, there's a higher shear stress area that happened during fill. This isn't gonna show you that. This is actually showing at, at a snapshot in time at the end of fill, what the, <clears throat> excuse me, what the shear stress is in the part. Um, there's another plot that actually we can look at and get the actual peak values, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then the other, uh, way we can also look at this. So if we look at this particular part, you can see that the, the max um, shear stress here is, is 0.39 uh, megapascals. Um, so if we look here in the, in the center, so I brought up a chart that actually shows a different way to look at the results. So here you can also see it's the same, uh, same analysis, um, but you can see that actually, although we're seeing those red areas, we can slice the part up and see what's happening you know, through the, the middle of it, um, that actually 90% of the polymer is actually happening at very, very low shear rates, so actually below 0.07 megapascals. So we can quickly look at something like this, although we're seeing red, we can look at the data and quickly understand if that would be impactful um, to our, I guess, to our project. 